Thank you for joining us for today's <laughs> lots of trucks today. If I don't get a hit, it's a win. <laughs> and people walking by. I like having people in the shot. All right. Thank you for joining us today for this episode of Seven Super Tips. I'm your host, Eric Qualman. Most of you know me as Equal Man. This is the show where we grab seven tips or life hacks from the world's top performers. Today we're joined by Will Smith, where he's gonna dig into why failure is part of your growth. We talk about this in all of my number one bestsellers. It, it's about failing fast, failing forward, failing better. It's about being flawsome. Awesome. It's not through your perfection that people like you. It's actually through your flaws and failures that you can showcase that you're a human. So without further ado, here is the one and only Will Smith. Love this one. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. Um, you know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. You have, you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You know, when you go to the gym and you work out, you're actually seeking failure. You wanna take your muscles to the point where you get to failure because that's where the, the adaptation is. That's where growth is. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed. They extract the lessons from the failure and they use that, the, the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success gotta take a shot you have to live at the edge of your capabilities you gotta live where you're almost certain you're gonna fail the reason for practice practice is controlled failure you're getting to your limit getting to your limit getting to your limit you can't lift that you can't do that you until you get to the point that all of a sudden your body makes the adjustment and then you can do it failure uh, actually helps you to recognize the areas where you need to evolve. So fail early, fail often, fail forward. Yeah, for, for me, the, the daily confrontation um, with, with fear has become a real practice for me since about three, three years ago, um, I, went, uh, I went skydiving in Dubai, right? And skydiving, skydiving is a really interesting confront with fear, right? So, so I got I got to stand up. I'm sorry, I got to stand up. I got to stand up. All right. So, so all your friends, what happens? You go out how you Oh, sorry. Oh, I dropped my thing. So what happens is you go out the night before and you you know, you take a drink with your friends and somebody says, "Yeah, we should go skydiving tomorrow." And you go, yeah, we'll go skydiving tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And you go, yeah. And everybody goes, yeah. Right? And you go home, by, and you by yourself, you're like, mm. <laughs> right? And you're like, well, yeah, I mean, they, they was drunk too. <laughs> right? So, so maybe, maybe they not, maybe, maybe, I mean, we don't have to go. We don't have to do it. <laughs> so then that night, you're laying in your bed, and you just keep, <laughs> And you're terrified. You keep imagining over and over again jumping out of an airplane, and you can't figure out why you would do that, right? And you're laying there, and you have the worst night's sleep of your life, but you still have the hope that your friends were drunk, right? <laughs> so you wake up the next day, and you go, you know, down, and you say where you were going to meet, and everybody's there. You're like, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> all right, all right, cool, 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 right? So you get in the van, and... You don't know that your friends had the same night that you had because they're pretending like they didn't. They're like, yeah, man, my uncle's a Navy SEAL. And, you know, this is going to be great. I've been looking forward to this. And you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And your stomach is terrible. You can't eat and everything. But you don't want to be the only punk who doesn't jump out of this airplane. So you get there and then you have the safety brief. And you're standing there, and the guys would say, well, if the chute doesn't open, what's going to happen as you're doing? You, well, well, why the hell, would, why, what could happen? <laughs> that the chute, would, the chute wouldn't open, right? So you do a thing, and what you do is your first jump, you're attached to a guy who is going, you know, he's going to walk you out. So you go, and you get there, and there's an airplane, and nobody's stopping. Everybody's still going. So you get onto the airplane, and you're sitting there, and, and you know, it's extra because you're sitting on some dude's lap, some stranger. <laughs> 
he's sitting on his lap. And it's like, you know, you got trying to make small talk. Yeah, man. You know. So you do, you be, you be jumping with people all the time, huh? You know. Right, you know. So, and then you just want to make sure, yo, you got, you got kids, right? You got people you need to see, right? You just want to make sure he's serious, right? So you get in there, so everything's normal. So you fly and you go up, you go up, you go up, you go up to 14,000 feet, and you notice there's a, a, a light. It's red and it's yellow and green, right? So right now the light's red. So then you start thinking at some point the light's going to go green, but you don't know what's going to happen, right? And you wait and it goes yellow. And the light goes green, and somebody opens the door, and in that moment, you realize you've never been in a freaking airplane with the door open. <laughs> right? Terror. Oh, sorry, I'm spitting. I'm spitting. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, terror, 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 terror. Right? So you go, and then, you know, if, you're, if you were smart, you sat in the back so you don't go first. Right? And then people start going out of the airplane. And you go, and the guy walks you up to the end of the thing, and you're standing, and your toes are on the edge, and you're looking out down to death. <laughs> and they say, on three. And they say, one, two. And he pushes you on two because people grab on three. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And you go, and you fall out of the airplane, and in one second, you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You're flying, right? It doesn't feel like falling, right? It's like the, you actually are kind of held a little bit by the wind, and then you start, and you, you start falling, you fall, and you, there's zero fear. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. It's bliss. It's bliss. And you're flying. <laughs> right? And you're doing that. And then 20 seconds, 25 seconds, 40 seconds, and you have enough time to just kind of be like, oh, shit, that's that building. I saw like that one. <laughs> oh, you can see the ocean. <laughs> right? You start doing all of that. And the, the lesson for me was, why were you scared in your bed the night before? Why did you, what do you need that fear for? Just don't go. Why are you scared in your bed 16 hours before you jump? Why are you scared in the car? Why could you not enjoy breakfast? What, 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 what did you need that, the fear is, fear of what? You're nowhere even near the airplane. Everything up to the stepping out, there's actually no reason to be scared. It only just ruins your day. You're, you don't have to jump. And then in that moment, all of a sudden, where you should be terrified is the most blissful experience of your life. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror. On the other side of your maximum fear are all of the best things in life. As a child, my parents always told me, you could be whatever you want to be. You could do whatever you want to do. And... You know, that, that office, that position, the, the highest office on the face of the earth, it was something I heard my parents saying it, but I didn't totally believe it. Yet I went out in the world and I carried myself and I held my head high and I stood there and I looked people in their eyes and I talked to people as if I was deservant of everything that this planet has to offer. So I just, I really want to say to, to children out there and to, to people who are watching, Confucius said one time, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. So I want to stand here before you and as I hold this award, I want to give love to my wife and I want you to keep in your heart, just know that you can, know that you can. I think, I think the most important uh, thing that, that I would hope that you, you would carry is um, that you're not doing it for you, mm -hmm. right? That the art that we create is to uh, inspire people. Mm -hmm. You know, when we step on stage, 
it's not for our ego, you know, it is to make the world brighter. You know, when you create mm -hmm. something, you're trying to create a moment or a feeling or trying to create an idea or inspire people to make their lives better, mm -hmm. right? And I see a lot of people get caught in ego gratification. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get caught in, uh, you know, creating for money mm -hmm. or uh, creating for girls to like you. Mm -hmm. and, and the greatest thing in my, in my career has been the constant commitment to putting something in the world of value, mm -hmm. not putting something in the world that makes me look hot. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Um, so I think as long as you can stay focused on delivering your art and delivering yourself and delivering your energy and delivering your ideas for the world to be better, it'll you'll you'll find it much easier to survive in the cauldron of this you know Hollywood machine. I realize that when to to have the level of success that I, I want to have is difficult to spread it out and do multiple things. You know, it's, it's in order to, to be world class, and I've made a decision, I want to be world class. And it just, it takes such a desperate, obsessive focus yeah. to, to excel on, a, on, a, on the level that, that I want to make movies. You know, I was uh, Star Wars when I was young. I sat in a the movie theater and watched Star Wars, and I just couldn't believe that that movie made me feel like that, just floored and just stunned by the creativity. And just I'm realizing that in order to move people in that way, in order to touch people in that way, you really got to focus with all of your fiber and all of your heart and all of your creativity. What is the difference between depression and joy, right? And I think it's purpose, right? It's like when you wake up in the morning and your life means something to somebody other than you, that you have a purpose. If you don't go do the things that you're going to do, people's lives will suffer. And I think that that kind of purpose, that like to live in service, not to you, but to live in service to humanity, to live in service to your family, to live in service to your church, to your city, to your country, to the world, yeah. living in service is that I, I, I feel like that is the purest form of joy. I have a mission statement. So every year for probably the past 10 years, I've worked out a mission statement for myself. And for the last few, few years, the mission statement has stayed the same. And it, you know, it's been improve lives, right? So when, when I go into something, I'm looking for how the quality of this piece could potentially improve lives. But it's all along the way. It's when you make the movie and how you're interacting with people in the process. And, you know, the, the, the concept of improving lives runs through the center of everything I do. And then I realize that the, the, the way to improve lives is to continually improve yourself, right? So with that, every, every morning when I, when I get out of the bed, you know, I, the, I haven't fixed everything in the world yet, so there's always something to do. And uh, in this film, I read a, an interesting quote um, for the uh, Siddhartha uh, Gautama, the, the Buddha. He said um, that um, good people have to get out of the bed every day and try to empty the ocean with a ladle, mm -hmm. right? And I thought that was, you know, I, I knew that was profound, and I paused for a second, and I said, all right, what the hell is a ladle, right? <laughs> right, so then, you know, I just, I touched it on my iPad, it's ladle. Oh, it's like a big spoon, a big spoon, okay. As we it's say, like Philly. a soup spoon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a soup spoon. I was like, why are you a soup spoon? So trying to empty the ocean with a soup spoon, you know, as the, the mentality of how you, you wake up every day to try to do good yeah. in, in the world. So for me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really driven by continually trying to um, elevate, my, elevate my mind and elevate my spirit and care for my body and 
um, to be able to love as many people as effectively as, as possible with this mystery of life that I've been given. Thank you for joining us for today's show. We hope those tips help unlock and unleash your inner superpower. If they do, please subscribe below to get next week's episode. And until next time, remember, it's not what we take from the world, it's what we leave behind. I'm your host, Eric Quammen. A lot of you know me as Equal Man. We're joined today by Will Smith, the famous actor. <laughs> that sounds Wait for that truck, all right. Much easier doing a podcast in a closed studio, no trucks. <laughs>